So I will begin. Um, I came to America in 1990, got a visa, and um, I came over in June 1990. And I went to college for photography in Ireland. I did a course in a technical college. I had a choice of art, be going to an art school or a technical school, and <clears throat> my thoughts about photography were it was there's a lot of technical aspects to the to the profession and um, that I needed to learn like uh, cameras not so much but more printing I was very interested in printing um, so I went to a technical college and I studied all that stuff got a certificate and start working with photographers in Dublin um, to, to learn the business side of it and pretty much when I came out of college that's when I realized that I didn't really know that much I mean I could photograph but everything I photographed never seemed to be what I wanted I got something but it was never it was very static and I didn't know what that was about I thought maybe I'm just a bad photographer but I kept going I kept working at it worked uh, on, in, on commercial shoots had a lot of fun shooting cars, shooting models, shooting food, um, everything. And then um, I even did weddings, so I just loved it. The, U the US Embassy asked me if I wanted to come here, and I thought, yeah, I'll come, come to New York. Um, all my heroes are here. They're all based in New York. and. I thought, okay, I'll start learning again, but I'll be learning from these guys. So I came, and um, <clears throat> my first problem when I got here was I had no money. I paid for an apartment, first and last month's rent, sharing the apartment. And um, so I had to work. And I got a job in the building site, painting, whatever. I even got a job in a bar and that scared me because I thought that might be my future. But um, I saved enough money to um, work as an assistant, go out and work with these people that I admire. And so and I did that. I did that for 1990. I did it for about 10 years. I worked with everybody on a freelance basis so I didn't stay with one particular studio. I moved around and I refused, I don't know why I refused, but I always refused a full-time position as a studio manager or a first assistant, anything like that. I didn't want to be um, in a full-time job, so, um, which was made it a little tougher. Um, but all the while, all this time, 10 years has passed, 11, 12, 13, I'm still amassing pictures, and um, when everything went digital, um, just as I thought I was, I had mastered everything. Digital kicked in, and now the cameras are expensive again. I had a Nikon F2, and I loved it, and I had to like jettison it, and buy my first camera was the Canon EOS um, Rebel. It's the only one I could afford. And it was a six point something megapixel camera. And so now, I have, so I have the camera, I know how to use it, and um, I don't know how to use Photoshop. And I have to buy Photoshop. And so I had to pay for that. And so I bought it, and then I started working for other photographers again because I had to learn this Photoshop. And so I, I got a work, um, the workflow method from various photographers. There's about two photographers that became friends of mine who were masters at Photoshop. And I would just go down there, have lunch, work on it, and work at home on my own. Um, but it became second nature to me, and my life changed, my work changed, because suddenly I could 
do all the colors. I like I could color correct everything, and I became very, very masterful at correct color correcting my work. And um, and it was awesome. It was really good. But I was, I look at my work and I wouldn't see any commercial value to it. So. Um, in other words, I wouldn't get hired by a magazine. Um, I wouldn't get hired by companies to do corporate work or anything like that. So I was in like a little bit of a predicament, and I didn't really know what to do. And so I kept assisting. And I was getting older, and that was weighing on me personally because a lot of the assistants coming up were like 10, 15 years younger than I am. And um, so um, I was hungry, and I was desperate. And um, I went out on the street in December 20, 23rd, 2005, to sell my work as l small little pieces, uh, 8 by eight by 12. And I wanted to make them special. So I wanted to be unique, because I knew I was going to be have some competition on the street. So what I did was I took all these um, Polaroids, the, the waste part of a Polaroid, the emulsion side, I call it. It's a part of a Polaroid that you peel off and you discard. And <clears throat> it has the dried emulsion on one end and the instructions for disposing of the Polaroid on the other. And then in the middle is where the image is. So I made, I had a small printer. Um, 8 by 10, I would print images 3 by 4, I'd put them into the Polaroids, and I had a mat made for the Polaroids, so um, I'd put them on mats and I would frame them. And people loved them. I made like a lot of money. You know, I, I made like $500 in one day, and I thought, OK. So um, I went out the next day. The next day was Christmas Eve. And, um, and there, was a, there was an MTA strike. I remember the subways were on strike. And I made, you know, I made more money. And I thought, OK, here I'm going looking for magazine work. And I'm hustling <clears throat> like you won't believe to try and get, like, a small image into a magazine, get a small assignment. And all they're going to do is they're going to pay me like, you know, $300, $400. And if I go out on the street, I can sell my work and make about six or $700 or $500. I'll be realistic. And, but that's not how I looked at it. I mean, that's one thing. But also, when I brought my work out on the street, um, I was showing my portfolio to people. Everybody was seeing it. And Union Square is a popular place. Lots of people, all sorts of people passed through there. And um, architects loved my work. So I, they would hire me to shoot um, buildings uh, that they managed or that they designed. And, um, and it paid like commercial rates for architectural commercial rates. I forget what it was, but it was, it was good money. And it also, um, I'll show you some of the work. I'll show you, uh, let's see. There's a shot in my catalog. Um, it's the cover. Let me get it. So this shot is, it's just one shot, but it's, um, it's the cover because it, it works. Uh, Park Avenue is the spine. So the red and white lines are traffic. Either side of it are buildings on Park Avenue. And this was a job that um, a management company hired me for um, to shoot, just to document their buildings. But they gave me access to all their buildings. And so this one I shot from the top of the Helmsley building. Um, <clears throat> pretty hard to get to get into it, so I took advantage of that situation. 
and um, I got these shots. So, um, that's, uh, that's how I started. So, um, so I stayed, every weekend I'd work, I'd sell my work on the street, and um, that would allow me to have five days to do whatever I wanted to do. So uh, those five days I would shoot. And um, it's a lifestyle, it's not for everybody, but um, I enjoy it because it brings me out of myself. Um, you'll notice later on that there's a lot of snow in my shots. I love cold weather, I love wet weather, um, and I like snowy weather. So this shot, I call it the bean, because it's a photograph of the Bean coffee shop on First Avenue and 9th Street. And um, it's around the corner from my apartment. And uh, I forget the year, so don't ask me the year. Probably like um, 2012, perhaps. So it was a nor'easter. It was, it was like cold and a heavy, heavy snow and heavy wind. And so I got as far as 9th Street, where I was standing for this shot, and I thought, I'm getting out of here, I'm going home. And I just couldn't handle it. Um, but I thought, okay, I'll get this shot, I'll take this shot. And I saw the dog walking across the street, and I thought, okay, I'll wait till, the, till his owner's out of the frame, and then I'll shoot. And I framed it up. I had enough time to put the, um, the fire hydrant there, because the fire hydrant plus the dog tell the major story and uh, and I got the shot and um, the wind was blowing down 9th Street and it blew into the lens so a lot of the distortion up on top like the red um, on the top left uh, from the traffic lights is just distortion from snowflakes blown onto the lens or maybe perhaps photographing through the snow but it distorted it in a beautiful way and um, that's a that's really popular shot, and I like it a lot too. I love the dog. Uh, then this is um, this is a Central Park photograph. It's um, I call it the blue tree. I cl I made it blue um, in Photoshop, and but the effects around it, the zoom effects, were done with a long lens during the exposure. So I shot it during the day during daylight hours at um, stopped down to like maybe F16 or something like that. During the exposure, which would have been about a quarter of a second or a half a second, handheld, um, I zoomed the lens during the exposure and it created that effect. So I liked the shot, I liked the effect, I just didn't like the color of the tree. The tree was, it was a very dull green and this was a winter shot as well or maybe early spring no snow and uh, so this effect I loved it and again I wasn't sure if people would like it but the beauty of selling my work on the street is I can bring it out and see if people like it if it sells great if it doesn't I'll, you know it didn't work and I found people were coming up to me and you know buying it and said, oh you know it's so spiritual and you know, falling in love with the image. And when people talk like that, it it blows my mind, because you know, I, I look at it and say, okay, these people are looking at it in a different way than I am, but it's great. I love it. Uh, this shot is a bar uh, in the East Village, cheap beer and booze, and I just again, it's very typical of the East Village and these places are disappearing very, very quickly. There have been areas being gentrified. And so really, I just wanted to photograph the bar. And the bartender, Nina, just happened to be coming out for a cigarette. And I asked her to pose for me. And she did, so I got that shot. So simple. Um, simple. This is um, Chrysler Building. My mom was with me when I shot this. And 
she's 93 now, God bless her. Uh, but she came over here early, like late 90s, and she loves New York. And she had a hard time understanding that I make, li make a living from selling pictures. Like she's, she expected me to, to work, you know, a regular nine to five job. So I'd always try to explain it to her. And I said, look, this is on a Saturday morning. So let's go out. We took the subway uptown. And she went, I, we came out of the subway and I saw this shot. I saw it before I took it. And um, she waited for about five minutes, and then she went to get breakfast. I came, I, I, went, I met her finally about a half an hour later. But I knew I got the shot. So um, she may, maybe she got it, I don't know. <clears throat> this is uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral on Prince Street. Prince, yeah. And um, this shot is a political shot. It was, I was angry with, I'm a Catholic, I was very angry with the Catholic Church about all the things going on in there. And so, and this is where the power of Photoshop comes in. You can make a statement, if you have to. Generally I don't, but in this particular case, I felt I had to. And um, I wanted to show the church, a nice church, um, but I wanted to show it like, enclosed. There's no way in. Almost like, um, um, what's that picture? Uh, Edward Hopper's picture, the people in, in the restaurant. There's no way out. This was what I was thinking about because the church is in there and there's no way into it. And I wanted to leave it at that. And then I loved the sign that says bump, bump ahead or something like that. Um, never intended for this one to to sell, but it's popular with certain people. But to me, I was angry with the church. Um, OK, enough of that. <laughs> this is Columbus Circle. And again, this is from uh, the Time Warner building. And this is, again, the architects or the owners of the building saw my work on the street and asked me to photograph uh, their buildings. And so <clears throat> I, I do that. I did it. I uh, got them what they wanted. And um, again, I had access to very high places. And so I shot this from the lobby or from the terrace on the North Tower. Yeah. Uh, there's a, the Mandarin Hotel is up there. So, um, and this is, this is a nice, um, cityscape, uptown cityscape. This is Coney Island. This one is ice on the beach, and um, it was cold. And it was just, the sky was blue, and the place is deserted. And it's just, to me, it's, it looks like ice cream. You know, it's just, uh, that's all, you know, there's a lot of color in it. And um, Coney Island's a very interesting place. So, and this is gone now. I think they've reformatted the whole place. This is the flat iron again. This is my dramatic shot of the flat iron. Um, I shot it on, in May, and I uh, shot it at night. And, um, just dramatic. Uh, full moon, time exposure on a tripod, and um, yeah. This is the Statue of Liberty. This shot I call Liberty, and it's it's a it's a it's a good shot I think, but I really I like it a lot because it's coming to America as, as an immigrant for me, it's, you know, that Statue of Liberty means a lot. So if you imagine people coming in on a boat, as I did, and they see the Statue of Liberty first, but then behind it is all this beauty here, all these buildings, all these people doing things. 
and a whole new life. And that's kind of how I look at that one. Um, this is Grand Central. And this one is, I shot this one in 2007. And this image change gave me a whole new style because it's, Grand Central gets photographed um, probably every day and by you know, a lot of good photographers. And so my shot was, okay, um, I got about, I got five images of, from the same position. And at the time, the, the flag bothered me because it was very dominant in the shot. And I thought, well, this is all about the American flag. So I went home, and I put all those images together. And this is over a period of probably five months, um, because in the beginning, I really didn't like the shot. Um, but I'd work on it. I, something bothered me, like I'd wake up at night and I'd work on it. I'd move it and slowly over those five months it started to take shape. And uh, the biggest problem I had was tattering the flag. It had to be done, um, but I didn't like doing it because I thought, you know, if I do that no one's going to like the shot because it's going to be very un-American to do that. Uh, but I did it, and I brought it out to sell on the street, and it just it worked. It worked really well. People really liked it. And I'll point something out for you. In the center here, and here, right around here, the halo looks like a skull. There's eyes here, and then the mouth is like down here. Uh, that was not intentional. Somebody pointed it out to me when, I, when they bought the image. And I said, OK, great. <laughs> Can you see it? Yes. So, will I move on? Yeah, OK. So this one I shot this year. This is, um, I call it girl power. I really should have called it fearless girl. But um, I didn't know the name of the, the piece when I photographed it, so I thought, you know, this is great, um, girl power. And it was very, very successful, sales-wise. People love it, and especially girls, uh, women love it. And it's, it signifies, you know, women, women's, women entering the financial markets, and I think it's awesome. It really should stay forever like that bull. Um, but um, again, I shot it in the snow. Um, and the only reason for that is because that neighborhood is not that photogenic. What, the financial district is not photogenic. But in the snow, it is. It's beautiful in the snow. I'll show you another one uh, further down. You'll see what I mean. Okay, so this one you saw. This one is Park Avenue. Um, and again, this shot is very technical. And it's, uh, it's um, what, how, how would I describe it? Um, I was so pleased to, to be where I shot it. I shot it from the top of the Helmsley building. And right up in the cuckoo's nest. I mean, you cannot get up there. So, but I was up there uh, because I was doing work for the management company. And so I got this shot, and I thought, mm, God, I had all this this place to be, and you know, all this access, and I got nothing. And I was, I was disappointed. You know, I really was. And I looked at it. And I said, it's, it's not that good. I mean, it's great to be up there, but it's not pretty. So, but I, I shot it anyway. So I shot a panorama, and again I, I went home, and over a period of time, I worked on it and uh, tried to figure out what I would do. And so, I loved the color in it, and I loved all the neon lights in it from the from the towers. And so what I did was I took one image, and I would, I flattened it one that I liked after color correcting it and everything and I would move it an inch 
copy it, move it, copy it, move it, copy it, move it. And there were at least at least a hundred, probably more than a hundred layers on the in the document um, by the time I was done. Um, and then I ended up with this. Is, does that make sense how I did that? Am I being clear? Yeah? Okay. All right. So it looked nice and I it's graphic, it's very square. Um, and I liked it for the cover of my catalogue. I thought the traffic down the middle, red tail lights, white um, headlights would make a great spine. And so that's what I did. That's Ireland. Uh, Irish farm dog. 1995. And um, initially, I saw the farm, and I thought, nice, you know, grass, there's no uh, tarmac, there's no roadway, it's all very old-fashioned. And um, the dog came up, started, you know, checking me out, and um, he just stayed there, he just kept looking at me, and I photographed him, I got that shot. So, I, don't, I think he's a sheep dog. But I loved all this, the sleep in his eyes and stuff. <laughs> this is Brooklyn Bridge. This is 2005, January 2005. Um, it's a time exposure. I shot it at dawn um, so that I could get very dramatic light on the bridge. Because I, all I really was interested in was the bridge and then the city. Uh, whatever city I could get. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll keep moving. This one is, I call it Marine. I shot it this year. And again, um, it, it's, you know, it's the Freedom Tower. And um, the straight shot itself is so-so. It's not great. I wouldn't buy it. Um, and so, so I work on them um, because it's an area that needs to be, I need to have it in my portfolio. So if I leave it, um, it's, you know, it, it, that's, not, that's not good. It, it, so something that's not photogenic in my eyes becomes a challenge. Um, and so the Freedom Tower, for this one, I was thinking of Mark Rotko. I mean, I was out all day. I was just basically just walking and shooting whatever appealed to me. And this one did appeal to me, uh, the straight shot. And then when I got home, um, I was thinking about Mark Rothko from the point of view of just the way he would split his canvas. Uh, the, the middle being that this black line here, and then this, and then just color up there. Um, and again, it's all layered. And uh, so this is, this is a technique that I rely on a lot. It's, I'm becoming known for it. Um, and it just, it's just a way for me to make something beautiful. So that's that. This is um, Max Orley's. This is down the block from me. And um, I photographed this pub a lot of times, in a lot of different um, situations. Um, I shot it without people in it. I shot it with a whole bunch of motorbikes outside it. And um, it never worked for me. I could never get it. And um, then two years ago, I was passing by it. I was probably going up to catch the six train. And I saw these guys walking. I said, well, maybe I'll just stop and I'll try and get something here. And I saw these four guys walking in and so this picture is now successful because it the story is you know where these guys are going you know exactly what they're going to do they're going to go in and they're going to have a few beers and they're going to talk and talk and tell you stories <laughs> so it's a cool shot i like that one and it doesn't it does not work in color i tried it in color it doesn't work this is again my neighborhood um local butcher shop 
uh, around Christmas time. And um, the beauty of this shot is that red truck. So with um, the white wall tires, um, the truck is beautiful. It, to me, that's what stopped me was th that truck. And then I, then I saw the meat market, and then I saw the colors working. And those guys were waving to me. And then that guy uh, with the blue shirt just smoking a cigarette, this girl passing by. and. Um, that's a cool shot. So this one is, this one I call Midtown. And it's the Helmsley building. So um, again, that's my technique. This one I shot at night also. And uh, again, it's beautiful area. It feels good up there. It feels like you know you can't miss. You ha you have to be able to get a good photograph up here, um, which is true. But I don't get anything that I like. I never do. Um, the towers are so similar uh, buildings, whatever you want to call them. Um, and so the magic for me comes when I can make something out of it, make like something dreamy or give it. Uh, a different dimension and um, that one I like a lot that one was on the cover as well um, of one of my magazine catalogs one before this one so that's Midtown this is the New Yorker again this shot is all about that New Yorker sign um, and the New York Times new building this one I shot from a friend's house. I was just up in his house one night and I saw it and um, I photographed it. And again, I did, I lured it and I exaggerated. That's a better word. Um, I exaggerated everything um, to the point where if you look closely at the shot, the blue is there are shadows of buildings behind it. Um, and so this, these images, this one, Midtown, um, Park Avenue, they bring out, uh, now I'm not, now I, like, I question myself um, because now I'm not really a photographer. Um, I'm not a painter. I can't paint, but yet I create all these unique images that look like they're paintings. Um, so all I can say about that is that that is my style. Um, I've tried painting some of them, and I just, I can't do it. You know, I said, well, if I can photograph it, I could, you know, the colors, I, I can examine the colors and look at them. I'd say, you know, it's not that hard. It's, you know, it's easy. Um, well, it's, uh, it's easy to a painter, but um, they have a different sensitivity to it. But I, so maybe, maybe um, I'm blending um, photography and painting, I don't know. Um, I'll have to coin a new fa phrase for it. I'll think about it. But uh, I do like the New Yorker sign, and um, it's, again, it's, it's New York, you know? It really is. This is Nightwalker, and this is um, Christmas Eve 2009, and it's uh, Tompkins Square Park, walking through um, 9th Street, look, walking east. The building is um, the Cristadora. And so this shot, in 2009, I did the Union Square Holiday Market. And uh, it, fit, it starts in like the middle of November, and it's every day until December 24th. And then you have to like break everything down and get out of there. Um, so. I did that. I broke everything down from Union Square, put it, stuff in a van, and I live in a walk-up. And so I had to carry all this stuff up. It took a couple of trips. And, um, but while we were driving down Avenue A, so all this white stuff is ground fog. It had been mild. That's, that Christmas Eve was mild. Um, maybe it was raining earlier in the day. And then at night, the temperature just dropped. I mean, it went down like by 20 degrees or something. I think that's what caused the fog. 
and I'd never seen it before. I mean, it was like very mysterious and very beautiful. And I thought, God, why does it have to be tonight? Why couldn't this be like tomorrow night? I'm tired. I don't want to go out anymore. And I sat in and I, you know, it was bugging me. I, I, my mind said, go out and photograph. <laughs> so I did. And uh, once I get out, once I got up out of my chair, I was fine. I was out there for hours. I was out there at about three o'clock. Um, but that's the one shot that I got. And um, I call it Nightwalker. This is a guy who was walking home, probably from a party. And, um, you know, it just has a lot of mystery about it. And I have a, a, when people buy this image from me, I really talk to them because I want to know why they want to have it. Uh, it's, it's a dark shot, you know. It's a very dark shot. Um, I like it. So this one I shot, this is a bar, where is it, the Hudson Bar and Grill. This year I shot at the same time as Maureen. I was walking, I walked from um, my apartment across to the river and down, down the river. I got the um, Freedom Tower. Then I was, I shot other stuff there as well, but then I just started walking east again. And Hudson Street is nice. Tribeca is a beautiful area. Um, <clears throat> every time I'm down there, um, especially on like around Christmas time or when there's snow, when there's not a lot of people out, um, I sense there are a lot of ghosts in New York, people who lived here before who just can't let go of the city. I mean, how can you? You know, my image of heaven is New York. So I always imagine, so I like walking around it alone, um, especially when it's empty. And to see lights on in a bar, and people are in, enjoying it, and then this girl walks along. And um, I mean, she's probably going into the bar, or she's probably, you know, going to a friend's house or whatever. But it's, it's a nice street scene, is what it is. And it would be a nice painting, um, if I could paint it. But uh, this one is, this was a commission. Um, this is the Williamsburg Bridge and um, a girl that sells a lot of my work has a store in Williamsburg and she needed me to go out to give her something of um, Williamsburg and so prior to her opening that store all my work is based in Manhattan all my streets um, my street photographs are Manhattan. And so now she's presenting a challenge to me. I have to photograph something that says Williamsburg. And I went out to Williamsburg, and there's nothing there that really can speak this is Williamsburg. I mean, you know it's Brooklyn, but it could be anywhere in Brooklyn. But the bridge does talk to you. Um, and the bridge is not that pretty. So, but what is beautiful about the bridge at this particular time was all the graffiti. And so walking across the bridge, I imagine all these young kids from wherever moving to Brooklyn. They're going to NYU, they're working, they're whatever. Every Friday night, they walk back home across the bridge and they leave their mark. And that was the beautiful thing I, I saw about this bridge. So I had to highlight the graffiti. So I photographed as much graffiti as I could um, which was easy. And the most predominant piece of graffiti that stood out to me was the Now You're Cool. I think it's just, you know, it says a lot. Um, and um, so the bridge, I did a lot of work to this. I forget exactly what I did, but I also liked the barge going through. And I liked it because it had red in it and it would make a nice sort of horizon for my picture. And um, I, I, I'm, okay, so what did I do? I used the transform tool in um, Photoshop and uh, this is what I came up with. Now you're cool. So this one is on Brooklyn Bridge and um, 
again, this f angle on Brooklyn Bridge is very, uh, it's a common angle to photograph. And <clears throat> I knew I was going to photograph it, but I didn't know, um, I knew I was going to have to alter it somehow. And so I just, again, multiple images, and I took my artistic license and uh, disheveled all the cables. I didn't, I didn't want symmetry. Um, I was looking for chaos. And I was also in a hurry to get this one done because it was one photograph. I, need, I had enough images for um, the Art Expo up in, uh, on Pier 92 or 94. And I needed one more shot. So I didn't give this one a lot of thought. Um, I photographed it. I went home. I messed it up um, the way I did. Uh, really without thinking, just knowing I was going to do that, but it just, it was all very abstract. And um, I sent a file to a printer and he printed it 11 by, uh, sorry, 40 by 60 on plexiglass. And um, <clears throat> then I thought, when it was done, I said, okay, now I've got my 11 images. And then I thought I was mad because who's going to buy this shot? You know, this is crazy. It, I got to tell you, it looked good big. And at that show, it was the first one to sell. It was the first one to go. And uh, so now we're talking like, now we're talking like money. You know, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So it, that, one, that one sold first, and a girl that bought it, she just, she came in, you know, she was going through the whole show, and she saw it, and she just flat out bought it. You know, and it was so good because I could have charged, I thought, wow, oh, I should have charged double for that. This girl's got lots of money. But yeah, you, know, you, you, you don't ever do that. You know, if you think you can get more, just be glad you sold it. This one is Pete's Tavern, um, Bubbles. That's flare, again, that's flare on the lens. And that's uh, using all the faults of the lens um, to your advantage. I, just, I, I imagine somebody in that bubble walking across. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty shot too. Uh, this, one, this one I like a lot. This is Radio City. And... Um, <clears throat> is it a multiple yeah, yep, it is. And I, uh, uh, no, in Photoshop. Um, and um, it's... When I came here, okay, so I came here in 1990, but in the 80s, I came over with my father. And uh, we stayed like in that area, around Midtown. And um, <clears throat> I always, that was my first trip here. I always remember, I always re remember being here with him. And, um, and he's pretty much just saying to me, you know, I, see, I was, I don't know, like, young, <laughs> 20, maybe 19. And he was pretty much just saying, you know, this is your future. He didn't say it, but he was saying it without saying it. And so I took that shot in memory of him. He's dead now. But I always remember being up there. It was raining. And uh, Radio City. This is Saturday Night, is the name of it. And it's... Um, the Waverly Diner on 6th Avenue and uh, Waverly Street. And they had changed all their, their decor and their lighting, their signs, and um, it looked really nice, it looked very photogenic. And um, so I photographed it, but there was something missing. There was too much foreground. Um, I thought maybe the subway entrance would alleviate that or add to the picture, but it really didn't. Um, <clears throat> so, the guy in the car is a friend of mine, and I, he has a, a couple of old cars. And so I just said, you know, just drive in the car and just stop there for a couple of seconds, you know, and we'll photograph it again. And I think I did it on a Monday night. It definitely was not a Saturday night. Um, and um, I got lucky with the color on 
the Empire State. I didn't notice it at the time. I noticed it definitely afterwards that it's the same color as the sign on the diner. And that was just being lucky. That's all it was. Um, and so <clears throat> this is my first, first attempt. Yeah, maybe. It's my first attempt to um, document the West Village. I'm so used to the East Village because it's grungy. And um, the West Village, I don't know it so well, so I kind of have to um, just pick things that I like, like that diner, and, uh, and make it work. So, and sometimes that means, you know, adding like things to like a driver, guy coming in the car, old fashioned car, changes the picture immediately. Now it looks like um, it's the 1950s, you know? So, this is, this is um, East Village, 2nd Avenue, um, and like 6th Street. So this shot is all about that drugs sign, drugs and cosmetics. And um, <clears throat> I'm really proud of this shot because the background beyond the drugs and cosmetics is not, not that good. It's, it's not pretty. And I knew I was walking into trouble when I shot this. Um, but then, I, then, you know, by, by the time I, I've come to this image, I knew my technique. So, I'll, you know, I just disguise it with my great technique. And um, again, it was raining, and I just superimposed multiple images on top of one another to um, create that scene, which make, gives it, again, it gives it a painterly quality. So I exaggerated a lot of things on it. Um, the Sixth Street sign is way too high, but um, overall, it's it looks it looks good in print. This is Silver Cup Studios, um, 59th Street Bridge. Eh, it's okay, you've seen it. This is uh, so this is Tom Square Park, and this is recently. So. Um, <clears throat> I never photographed people, and now suddenly I am, and um, I don't know why. So it's, uh, I'm going to play with it and see where it leads me. So I'm not quite sure where I'm going with this. It's not something that I can bring out and sell on the street. So you've got to know that I make all my money by selling work that people want to buy on the street. So this would be perfect for, I imagine, like the New York Times magazine. That's where, that's where I saw it in there. Oh, I imagine like the editor calling me up, the photo editor, Carol, we want you to go out and photograph Tom Square Park. I said, yeah, cool. So this would be one of the shots I would give them. And uh, yeah, might happen. This is Brooklyn. Um, Bling, uh, it's, what's the name of it? Roebling, it's Roebling Street. So, um, and again, I shot this because um, <clears throat> people sell my work in Brooklyn, so therefore I have to photograph Brooklyn um, and find something nice there. Um, the dog was made the shot for me. He was just there, and um, I, w I was unaware of him at the time when I was taking the shot because it's, a, it's again, it's a panorama shot that I've put together. Um, I was more focused on the cars, the bikes, whatever was happening out in the middle of the picture. Um, but the dog really just came up and made a shot. So this one I call Sniff Dog. It's an okay shot, but people who live in Brooklyn like it. This one is called Snow New York. And um, I shot this on December 19th, 2009, during the my first year in um, the Union Square Holiday Market. And um, so there was myself and another guy, a painter. We rented a boot and we would show, I'd show my photographs, he'd show his paintings, and we hired girls to be there um, to make it more neutral. So he wasn't there, I wasn't there. Um, so they would sell our work for us. 
And um, so on December 19th, I went up to see how they were doing. I was a little nervous because I wasn't sure if I was going to make any money or not. And um, they pretty much said, you know, just, um, you're not good for business. You should just go off and take some pictures. Really, that's what they said to me. And, and I agreed because I was, I was like, I was nervous and I was showing it. So, so I left and I had my camera with me um, and I got this shot. And um, it's, I shot it from, uh, with a 35 millimeter lens, I was like around 25th, just far north as I could be without having any obstacles in front of me. I think it was 25th Street. And um, it just worked. Everything, uh, that guy walking in was wearing red. Those co that couple in the center, um, she had a red umbrella. I waited for the lights to go red and the traffic lights and tail lights, uh, cars just hitting the brake. And it was snowing. And um, if I'm to be re remembered for any photograph, it's going to be this one. This one will hang in the mama when I'm gone. <laughs> I'll be remembered for this shot. Uh, it's the best shot I have. I have no intention of trying to better it. Um, I'm not going to compete with myself. Uh, I'm just happy to have it and to be able to say, hey, that's my, sh that's my photograph. And um, these things happen. They happen to all of us. These little time slots, something's going wrong somewhere. <clears throat> you walk off, you don't get mad, and suddenly you're in a whole new world. You, you, you just capture, you, you capture something that becomes timeless, and you don't know it at the time. Um, and that's just persever perseverance. Um, a bit of luck as well. This one is, this shot, again, the rain. This is about that bar sign. This is on Elizabeth Street, and I pass that bar all the time. It's closed, I think it's gone now. But um, every time I'd walk past it, I'd imagine, you know, it's such a pretty sign. Um, you know, if, if you were in a storm and you saw that bar sign, you'd go in there because you know it would be someplace warm. You just know it. And um, so that's what the shot became, was about, just someplace warm. I had a title before I photographed it, and I shot it in the rain. Um, I got down there before, I knew it was going to rain this day, I checked the forecast. I set the camera up in, while it was still dry, I got the exposure. It was cloudy, so the exposure wasn't going to change in an hour's time. It was going to be fairly, fairly uh, steady, exposure-wise. Um, and I did want the time exposure, so I set it for one, two seconds. I don't remember quite how long, but long enough. Um, so the camera was set up. I had it on a tripod, and then I covered it with a cellophane bag. Um, so it wouldn't get wet. And uh, then when it rained, it, I mean, it poured. I mean, it was just as much rain as I wanted. And it was, it, and what the rain did, it cleared up, it cleaned up the footpath. It hid all the garbage bags. Just in front of that black car, there's a bunch of garbage bags, but you don't really notice it. Um, and then during the exposure, um, I think that was, it was either a police car or, um, an ambulance. I think it was a police car going past, and uh, the couple came out of the bar uh, to smoke a cigarette just at the right time. So, and they make the shot. And I, again, I did not speak to them. I asked them to be in my shot, and they just came out. And I thought, okay, I'll, I'll take advantage of that. So, this, yeah, Spanish cafe. I'm not sure if it's still there or not. Uh, Brooklyn, um, it's okay. This is Thompson Square Park. Uh, spring rain is what I call this shot. And it was the first day in spring when I noticed that all the leaves were on the tree. They were all young, they were all vibrant, they were dancing. And um, that's the shot. Now that's, that is a beautiful tree. It's a beautiful shot. It's a beautiful tree. Um, I like trees. 
I like trees and elephants. That is um, Sunset at Chelsea Piers. And it is, I was over there on that evening, and I said, oh, wow, beautiful, beautiful sunset. I photographed it, and everything was super sharp. It looked terrible. So I just shot it out of focus, and it looks incredible. <laughs> Coney Island, Nathan's. Um, this is um, the Mermaid Parade. Lots of, lots of stuff going on there. Boardwalk in Coney Island. Again, it's got that romantic feel to it. This is the Bowery, and um, it's, you know, again, the graffiti here and that truck were like my prime interest. And then that girl was just walking, she was sneezing, and the guy crossed the street didn't really know it, but he, I think he was checking her out. Um, but I was like all about that graffiti, which is now gone. And that garage is now. Um, I think it's like a, some kind of a little arcade, food arcade. This, this one I shot with my cell phone. Um, it's over in the meatpacking district, and it's not that long ago. Um, maybe, maybe three years ago, I saw these big sides of beef coming in, and I thought, wow, I should have, should have had my camera. I was cursing myself that day. But I got it with the cell phone, and um, then I, you know, I said, okay, I'll go back again. But so I went back and I spoke with these guys. They don't want to know you. I mean, it's like they really, they don't want, they don't want you photographing their beef. They don't want to talk to you. Um, yeah. So, cell phone shot. That is just, um, it's uh, an alarm kiosk for fire department and uh, the police and it is broken, the wall is all peeled, and to me it looks like a grandfather's clock. And um, I photographed it, uh, I think it was in Greenpoint, and I left it for a couple of years, and then, you know, I came, I came to it, I thought, okay, you know, let me put it out to see, I need, I need some new images to show people. And it just goes like that, it's bizarre. Girls love it. I think it's because it's 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 faded from red to pink, and so do, so has the wall. Coney Island. This one I call the kiss. In a storm, uh, people were getting off the um, the beach and uh, running for cover, and I just saw those guys kissing. This is um, this is gone now. This was an old Jewish theater in on Avenue A. And um, it's now it's now a gym, but the whole building is gone. Um, but I saw it, I was having lunch across the street from it, and I saw this guy. He had a sofa. He had his little artwork. He had like his living room there, and it just it just looked. He he was pretty happy too. Um, and so I just said, yeah, this guy, yeah, that's a nice shot. Times Square. Um, that is a composite, three images, one on the left, the one in the middle, and the one on the right. Um, I was nervous doing that shot because there's so many cars, so, so much activity all around me, it's very hard to focus um, my mind, not the camera, <laughs> although the camera wasn't focused either. <laughs> But um, I, I, I did set up a tripod because I wanted to get, to me, Times Square is light and color. And the color is in the traffic and it's in the signs. Um, and I wanted it out of focus. <coughs> and that's what I got. This is Thompson Square Park. Thompson Square Park lights. And again, it's in Thompson Square Park. This was the same night as the ground fog. To Christmas Eve, and um, I was looking up. I was in the park looking up at Eighth Street or not? No, probably Ninth Street. And again, I just it didn't look pretty when it was all in focus. There was no eye candy. Um, but now, out of focus, um, it just looks pretty. 
and um, pretty and abstract. And uh, that one sells for me too. Union Square. Um, I took this. This shot, I love Union Square. I got to tell you, there's a story about this shot. So basically, I would be set up somewhere here, like around here, we would just set up, put, a, put out our tables, and just do whatever, sell our work. And um, what I really like about those years was it brought me out of myself. It made me very uh, not, it taught me how to talk to people, how to sell my work. Um, and so all, I was grateful for that. And I just put it down to the place. It was Union Square. There was people from all over the world selling their work. Um, and so I thought, okay, I better, you know, I'll shoot this. So I went across the street. Um, Filene's basement was there at the time, and I asked if I could, you know, photograph through the windows. And they said, yeah, okay. And I said, you don't mind? So no. I said, well, I have to bring up black material, and I have to black out the, uh, the, the store behind me because it will reflect in the glass. And I said, no, no, do whatever you have to do. So I came up, I put up a big piece of uh, velvet, I put the tripod behind it, set the camera up, and I got the shot. And um, I was very thankful to those guys for letting me do that. And um, I thought, OK, so the W Hotel is huge in this shot. And I thought, these guys, they just might want to have it. You know, so I went in and I said, oh, who's the manager, blah, blah, blah. Um, I brought in like a card. And they just, up front, they just bought it. They you just said, yeah, yeah, we love it, yeah. And um, then this building here is not there anymore. There's a new building gone up, and it's residential. Um, <clears throat> the guys who, the developers, um, or the real estate guys, um, I'm not quite sure what you'd call them, but um, they saw me on Union Square, and they saw this shot, and they bought it. They, they wanted, so we want this for our offices out in Israel somewhere. They wanted a big copy of it. Uh, yeah, no problem, whatever. <laughs> and um, then he told me how they were, this building was going to be knocked down. They were going to put up a residential building, and we would like to have a shot afterwards. I said, OK, whatever. Um, so that shot is it just it sold so well, you know, and so many opportunities came from it. people seeing it on the street, saying projecting something for them for themselves into that image. It's oh we gotta have this image. Mm -hmm. So and I find that extremely interesting because that's how it worked. I sold it twice, I sold it to this guy, I sold it to the W Hotel. Um, and that was, when was that? That was like 2006, 2007, thereabouts. Um, and it was around, it was like October, because there's the Suka, the Suka um, building there on, on Union Square. OK, this is Vezak's local bar down the East Village. Uh, good place, good place. <laughs> this guy here. Uh, selling the ices, ices. he uh, I think he thought I was like an uh, undercover cop or something because as soon as he saw me, he, he got really like, he said he moved away. Um, and, but I managed to get the shot before he left. This is Wall Street. This was a difficult shot. And again, this one was a commission based on my Grand Central image. Um, a trader bought my Grand Central image for his apartment, and he said, oh, can you do something like that with uh, Wall Street? And I said, yeah, absolutely. I went down there, and um, there is, every angle is extreme. You know, you can't, you can't shoot it straight on. Even if you had a fisheye lens, I doubt you could do it. <clears throat> so I came over to the, the side, um, in front of the, uh, is it the George Washington statue? I forget. Yeah, right, okay, so 
What's that? You're probably sending on the steps of federal law. Yes, exactly. And so I photographed it from there. And again, the background was not that interesting because um, there was some sky in it, and it was detracting from the stock exchange. So I just, again, I treated it like, OK, make it, make it, make, make it something for this guy. And uh, again, a lot of thought went into a lot of you know, mistakes, a lot of, you know, what are you doing? I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but I did like the flags. The flags were like phenomenal. And I liked the Wall Street sign, because no matter whatever I did, the Wall Street sign was there, so people are going to know it's Wall Street. So that gave me license to go like insane with the image. And I added all these buildings to the back. And um, it worked. It worked. Again, the people who like this shot are finance people, people who work in that neighborhood. This one is um, Uh, what do I call it? Toro Toro, I call it. So, um, I was trying to photograph this bull. Again, because it's in New York, I feel I have to capture it. And I tried for a week and I gave up, I gave up on it because I just, I can't make it, I can't do anything. Even if I do make it abstract, it's, it's not going to work. Um, <clears throat> so I said, okay, hmm. I'm, I'm done, I can't, I can't get this. Um, then it snowed, and it snowed on a Sunday. And I thought, okay, I'll go down and I'll photograph it. And um, the, so the snow, so the snow, what the snow does, it, first of all, it cleans up the street. Um, and I shot it at 3 o'clock in the afternoon because there was a shadow, which I in Photoshop, I had to enhance. It was a lot weaker than it is there. Um, but the snow on the bull gives, the, it gives it sort of dimension. And it makes it a little bit easier to look at. And um, yeah, that worked as a panorama. That, was, that worked for me. So let's see, what else have I got? This shot is the Washington Square Arch. Uh, Again, I added traffic lights to it. I took a lot of artistic license here. Um, the color uh, in the foreground on the bottom is from the Christmas tree. Uh, the sun coming through the arch, reflecting on whatever color was on the Christmas tree. And I multiple exposed or mul multiple images superimposed on one another. And um, people like that shot too. Coney Island, Wonder Wheel, evening, sweet. That's it, guys. That's it. <clears throat>